peace to all of you who are in Christ. Amen. We consider as our sermon text this morning the epistle lesson appointed for the nativity of our Lord, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my Son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Here ends the epistle lesson, and we pray. Lord Jesus, because you became one of us, we can pray to you and know that God in heaven hears us. You are Emmanuel, God with us, God in our place. For this we most heartily thank you, for now we know the God of all love, the God who has drawn close to us, that we might draw close to him. How wonderfully you came to take away all our fear and all our doubts. You came as a babe, helpless, to be our help. You came as a babe, humble, to remove our pride. You came as a babe, lowly, so that we might be lifted up to you. You came as a babe, pure, so that you might take upon yourself our sin. Help us, Lord, to know you always as you are, so that we need no longer seek far and wide, high and low, to find God. Fill us with your Spirit and bring us again to kneel at your manger, there to confess, my Lord and my God. Amen. <clears throat> darkness. Darkness. The world is in darkness. All people are born into the darkness. You and I were born in darkness. Jesus sums up the whole law of God when he says, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, we can convince ourselves that we are pretty decent people. At least we make an effort to do the best we can. But who among us will claim to have matched that standard of perfection? Who among us will claim always to have put others first, always to have helped others before helping ourselves? Who among us can claim to have obeyed God perfectly every day of this life, never doubting His providence, never worrying, never coveting anything he has chosen not to give us, never resenting or disobeying the earthly authorities he has provided for our good. But it's Christmas, you may be thinking. This doesn't sound like much of a Christmas sermon so far. We don't want to hear about our sins. We're here to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Well, it's true that we would prefer not to think about our sins, especially on a joyous occasion like Christmas. However, unless we stop for a moment and consider our lost condition that has resulted from our sins, we find that we really have nothing real to celebrate on Christmas. A blind man in the dark will not see the need to turn on the light. However, if he is enabled to see, then he'll realize he's in the dark. And so it is with us. We who live in the darkness of sin must first have our eyes opened. Must first have our eyes opened to the darkness in which we live 
before we are able to rejoice in the wonderful light. We confess in the Nicene Creed that Jesus is God from God, light from light. We were born into the darkness of sin. We were lost. We were depraved. We were hopeless. Then God sent His Son. God from God, light from light. And that Son of God was and is the solution to our darkness. Jesus is the solution to our darkness. Jesus has, in fact, brought us out of darkness and into His marvelous light, as St. Peter tells us. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Well, all the way from the day Adam and Eve fell into sin until the day the prophet Malachi wrote the last words of his prophecy. Throughout those thousands of years, God promised to send a Savior. Over time, God revealed details about this Savior, about who He would be, about what He would do, about the salvation He would accomplish. Now, God revealed all these things, not completely, not all at once, but piece by piece, one detail at a time. And so throughout the pages of the Old Testament, we find out various things. The Savior would be born of a woman. He would be the seed of Abraham, the offspring of Abraham. He would descend from the tribe of Judah. He would be, more specifically, the son of David, descended from King David. His mother would be a virgin. And his work would involve deep humiliation and intense suffering. But later he would be highly exalted. This Savior would be God from God. He would be true God, the eternal Son of God the Father. He would be the heir of all things, the one through whom also God created the world, as we read. That means this Savior would be no mere angel. He would not be one of those created beings who serve the Lord. But the writer to the Hebrews points us to several statements of God from the Old Testament to establish the superiority of the Savior to the angels. You are my son, today I have begotten you. I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Let all God's angels worship him. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. And that Savior would be the human son of a woman. But the Savior would also be the divine Son of God. And so with the birth of this God-man, God would no longer speak piecemeal through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. So the complete and perfect revelation of God has come in and by Jesus Christ. Jesus has made known to us once and for all the Father and the love the Father demonstrates toward us. Jesus is light from light. As we read in Hebrews, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. Jesus is true God. He sustains all life and all things. In Jesus we live and move and have our being. And yet, incomprehensible to us, though it may be, the one who sustains all things was himself sustained by the milk of his mother's breast. And Jesus, who upholds all things, has made purification for sins. That's why he is our light from light. He has drawn us out of the darkness of sin and death into his light of salvation. And so in order to accomplish this, Jesus had to become one of us. He had to be human. God is not under his own law. God is subject to no one and nothing. Only a human being could live actually under the law of God and keep it. And where we have failed to obey, Jesus has obeyed God in everything. 
Quoting from the Old Testament, the writer to the Hebrews tells us, You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Jesus lived a perfectly obedient life in our place. But then Jesus handed the reward for his perfect life over to us. He gave it to us. He gave us the oil of gladness beyond his companions. And he chose willingly to go to the cross and to suffer and to die. Again, he had to be human. God cannot suffer and die. Only a human being could suffer and die. And therefore the Savior, true man, was able to endure the punishment for our sins. But the divinity of our Savior, the Godhood of our Savior also was necessary. Every human being born of a human mother and a human father is born in sin, is corrupt. In order for the Savior to live a holy life on our behalf, He had to be the Son of God rather than the Son of a sinful man. And furthermore, even if a human being, even if I were able somehow to live a perfect life, which I assure you I am not, I would only be able to earn a place in heaven for myself. My one perfect life would not be sufficient for anyone else. We also realize that tragically many unbelievers die in their sins and receive their just and eternal punishment. But no one can suffer on behalf of anyone else. Each person can only bear the punishment for his own sins. The Savior had to be true God. Because as true God, Jesus was able to live a holy life in the place of every single person on earth. And he was able to offer an infinite sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. Our Savior, true God from eternity, and the truly human Son of Mary has lived our holy life for us. He has loved righteousness and hated wickedness. And our human and divine Savior has paid the price of His own blood for all our sins. On Christmas, God gave us exactly what we needed, the one gift we needed above all else. He gave us a Savior from sin and death, a Savior to reconcile us with Himself. And so in Christ, we are reconciled to God. I think we all have heard it said that Jesus, our Savior, is really the best gift of Christmas. And while this is entirely true, I think when we hear it said, we probably picture a baby lying in a manger, far removed from us in time and in space. We probably tend to think of Jesus as a gift that is far removed, a gift we cannot open for ourselves today. Now, however, God still speaks to us by His Son, as the writer to the Hebrews tells us. Think about this. We even call Jesus the Word made flesh, as we read in John's Gospel. He is the Word of God made flesh. Jesus is a gift that we are able to open and receive today, here and now. In fact, He's a gift we're able to open not just on Christmas, but every day of the year every day of our lives. And so today and always, we thank our Lord. We thank our gracious God for the wonderful gift of His Son as we open His Word again and again and as thereby we receive the eternal blessings of His saving work on our behalf. Thanks be to God for sending us His Son, who is God from God and light from light. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.